Hello, my dears. Very good morning to all. So today we are going to discuss a very important session in uh, measurement, which is nothing but energy meter, in which induction type energy meter is very, very important. So uh, questions are usually asked. You know, regularly we are seeing some questions regarding the energy meter in every competitive examination regarding the energy meter constant and all. You can see uh, many questions regarding that okay in each examinations so it is very very important as far as the competition point of view okay so let us discuss first the <coughs> construction of the induction type energy meters okay so it is a single phase induction type energy meter only difference in three phases instead of this there will be three separate winding and coil okay that's all so listen my dears and three uh, such a type of arrangements will be there in case of three phase energy meter so let's learn what is the induction type energy meter so as the name indicate induction type means the working principle behind this type of energy meter is simply but the mutual induction simply but the mutual induction which is similar to that of the uh, single phase induction motor right single phase induction motor is a uh, working principle now so similar manner not exactly same rotating magnetic field and it there it, not, it will not generate anything but there will be a magnetic field and there will be an interaction of magnetic field and hence there will be a rotation taking place so it is called an induction type energy meter so mainly the induction type energy meter consists of my dears two magnets this is called the shunned magnet this E shape magnet now this is called the shunned magnet and this is called the series magnet this C shape magnet is called the series magnet or E shape is called the shunned magnet and C shape magnet is called the series magnet and why the name shunned and the series means that in this magnet the in central limb there are some windings these windings are very few I mean very large number of turns and the thickness is very less I mean less thickened or less thickness very large number of turns are the windings in the central limb and these windings is directly connected across the supply that means these windings is connected in parallel to the supply that is why the name shunned shunned uh, magnet because this magnet is energized by this magnet this is not the permanent magnet this is the temporary magnet so for energizing that there should be some coil so that coil is connected in parallel with the supply that is why the name shunned magnet that is why the name shunned magnet see the other type of magnet this is called the series magnet right? this is called the series magnet why the name series magnet means the winding on which the series magnet contain this is the winding and this contains very few number of turns you can see directly and thicker and thicker few number of turns and thicker when it become thicker its cross sectional area will become reduced and its resistance will decrease so that it can carry very large amount of current which means this winding should be connected in series with the load because we can't predict the nature of the load. Sometimes it may carry very few currents, sometimes it carry very large current. So overall, we have to carry the coil or we have to design the series coil in such a manner that it should carry a very large range of current so that its resistance should be minimum. So resistance should be minimum means its thickness should be very high. And so that we, we have to make thick wires, thick copper conductor and very few number of turns, my dears and few number of turns by making this few number of turns in the uh, series magnet what happened resistance will be lower inductance will be lower resistance will be lower inductance will be lower because we have r equal to what my dear is r is equal to rho l by a once a become less a is decreased that is sorry once a become high here in the case of cross section area is very high now this is very thick copper conductor right so thick means its cross section area will be very big, very high so that r become very low so that it can carry very high current and it inductance l is equal to what is the equation for inductance n phi by i if number of turns is lesser means inductor also less inductance also less so the nature of this series winding is that the nature of this is for series winding series winding is that what high i mean low resistance and low inductance in the case of shunned winding you can see one thing my dears here again the same thing rl by rho rl by a rho l by a 
there the area of cross section of the winding will be very less which means very small that means this conductivity will be very small means r will be very high and it contain very large number of turns in the shunt coil so which means what shunt n phi by i this n will be very high so that l will be very high so this is for shunt winding shunt winding so in the examination right in the examination a question may be expected like this what is the nature of this shunt and series magnet or sorry shunt and series coils shunt and series coil yes, so a question will be asked this is a very popular question now you can you may confuse it what is will be r what will be l what will be r what will be l for series and shunt coil this is very clear okay so for shunt coil for shunt coil the l will be very high r will be very high for series coil r will be very less l will be very less that's all. that's all is it clear my dears so that is the uh, resistance and inductance uh, regarding the shunt and series and there is an aluminum disc my dears there is an aluminum disc which is very light in weight very light weight aluminum disc is there why we are using aluminum disc this disc is actually nothing but it is a rotating part it is a rotating part of the energy meter in our old i mean old home now the energy meters are you no know, it is new now so in old energy meter you may you might have seen in your old home or in grandpa's or grandma's home or in, in your what village right there there were there was a time there was a time we used that old type of energy meter in which there was a rotating disc you can see the rotation of the disc suppose you are switch on your iron i mean electric iron and all this rotation will be very high suppose you simply switch on one fan or light rotation will be very low that rotation member na that member is this aluminum disc okay and why we are using aluminum means aluminum is a very light in weight metal very light weight metal and cheaper cheap cheaper that's why we are using aluminum as a rotating member and here is a permanent magnet which is in the shape of a c a c shaped permanent magnet is there permanent magnet i repeat this is the permanent magnet okay and uh, that's all that's all the constructional features so let's see the working <coughs> let's see the working see my dears the pressure coil here the pressure coil is connected in parallel with the supply so that this pressure coil having always the rated voltage always the rated voltage the pressure coil having always the rated voltage and in the case of a current coil this current coil is listen this current coil is what is connected in series with the load this current coil is connected in series with the load which means this current coil carries the rated load current rated load current which means the load may be vary so the current also should vary so the current coil is in series with the supply i mean load and the pressure coil in parallel with the supply is it clear that is the difference okay that is the difference and let's see what happened when we connected certain load just a minute my dears just a minute the problem is with my mobile is that hmm unless it's air aeroplane mode na it is off what happen in between my recording there may be some push messages and it will break my recording no unfortunately 2 3 days back what happened i recorded fully so i hope it is recording but after i look to stop after i came to stop what happened it's not recorded it is same there so i have to re-record again okay that problem with it was there anyway so come to my point <coughs> so what happened we apply certain load what happened we apply certain load to the what uh, energy meter so what happened it consume certain amount of current right so due to the current ic ic is called the current coil current and ip is called the pressure coil current il is called the load current this load current is same as that of the current coil current okay so what happened my dears what happened this is not the pressure coil voltage okay vp please hmm? so what happened this ic na this ic is flowing through the series winding so that there will be some magnetic field generated because we know that whenever there is a flow of current in the conductor there will be a magnetic field surrounded by it. and 
it will generate a certain flux and that flux is there in the this air gap okay and here also this is the parallel winding so shandu winding right so here also we are applying certain voltage so due to that a small current will be absorbed by this uh, series uh, coil so that this winding resistance is very high this winding resistance is why so very small current will be absorbed by uh, this what uh, shunned winding so that there also some flux so the two fluxes my dears one flux is like this and another flux is like this this the interaction of these two fluxes makes there will be a rotational effect or in other words the interaction of these two fluxes generate some emf in the aluminium disc some emf in the aluminium disc because whenever there is a conductor in the change in magnetic field there will be some induced emf due to faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction so there also a small amount of induced emf will be there in the what disc due to that that induced emf there will be a current due to that current there will be a torque that torque will tend to rotate the disc in clockwise or anti clockwise this depending upon the design parameter so the disc starts rotating whenever we increasing the load means this ic will increase so that more flexes will generate here so that more torque will generate here and it's it start rotating very fast rapidly very rapidly it start rotating is it clear so i said more torque in the sense my dear more torque and speed are related i mean uh, opposite quantities so i mean in the name of torque means more force will get in order to rotate that's all okay don't misunderstand so <clears throat> what happened when the load increases my dears the flux density or the flux will increase so the disc start rotating very faster than previous one so there will be a speed which is proportional to the what energy i mean uh, energy consumed that we will prove now okay that we will prove now so listen my dear let's go to deep into the theory what happened okay let's see listen listen my dear so what happened the speed of the the speed of the disc now the speed of the disc let's be m which is directly proportional to kilowatt hour kilowatt hour consumed i will prove how it is obtained i will prove that n will be directly proportional to kilowatt hour or replacing that proportionality constant i can use a constant k k into kilowatt hour where k is called the energy meter constant and its unit will be revolution per kilowatt hour and its unit will be revolution per kilowatt hour which means if the disc rotate one complete rotation it is an indication of 1 kilowatt hour energy is consumed i repeat if the energy meter rotate complete rotation it is an indication of 1 kilowatt hour energy consumed you can you can change the design parameter but ideally it is like that okay so suppose k is equal to 1 means n is equal to kilowatt hour for 1000 rotation 1000 kilowatt hour so you can adjust the value of k according to your convenience but the fact is how much it rotate how that much energy it will generate okay for ideal case for ideal case one rotation will correspond to 1 kilowatt hour consumption of energy that's all i will prove i will prove that how it is obtained listen my dears <coughs> so this is my applied voltage this is my applied voltage and the current coil current now this is lagging a very small angle very small angle my dears and the pressure coil current now it is lagging very large angle that pressure coil current angle be del and this current coil angle be theta and this is nothing but it will be phi this is nothing but it be phi or let be i can say like this 
let be phi and this be alpha any angle you can use my dear any angle you can use okay so what happened the pressure coil current i already told you the pressure coil have a more inductance the pressure coil is more inductive reactance so what happened it will lag more with respect to the voltage but the current coil is not that much reactive it is more it is not that much reactive it's not that much inductive i mean inductive and resistive so what happened there is a small lag of current ic with compared to the voltage <coughs> so the developed torque here my dears the developed torque will be proportional to ip into ic into sin alpha ip into ic into sin alpha where alpha is nothing but alpha is equal how can i write alpha my dears alpha is nothing but del minus phi alpha is nothing but del minus phi so when with this alpha will be sin alpha will be maximum the sin alpha will be maximum when when what happen with the sin alpha will be maximum when alpha is equal to 90 degree am i correct or or so del is equal to 90 degree okay sin alpha will be maximum when del these things will be 90 degree correct or alpha will be 90 okay alpha will be 90 degree i can say like this this alpha will be 90 degree or or if alpha is 90 means what happened what we are going to do here we have to make my dears we have to make what what i am going to do suppose the ip is here suppose the ip is here suppose this is ip you imagine suppose this is ip what happened this is ip what happened this del na del this del become 90 degree am i right suppose this is ip means v and this is ip means the angle between v and ip normally we took took as del correct this del we took as del but now the angle between v and ip suppose ip is here you imagine ip here means the angle between v and ip will be 90 that means del become 90 degree if del become 90 degree if del is equal to 90 degree then then alpha will be what my dears 90 minus 5 substitute del value that's all if del is equal to 90 degree alpha will be equal to 90 minus 5 am i correct 90 minus 5 so can i rub this okay <laughs> listen so then alpha is equal to what 90 minus 5 so what will be what will be the developer tool Suppose I am re removing the proportionality constant and put my new constant which is equal to 1. So let me IP into IC into sine of 90 minus 5. Which is nothing but my ideas. IP into IC sine of 90 minus 5. What is sine of 90 minus 5? Cos 5. Okay. And what is this IP? I can write IP as VP by RP into IC into cos 5. That is nothing but td developed it all okay my dears okay so how can i how can i connect this how can i connect this see vp into ic vp into ic is nothing but the applied voltage v into the applied current i the load current ic is nothing but my dear load current i already told you ic and il are same so v is nothing but the voltage i is nothing but the current cosine of the angle between these two so definitely td will be proportional to what power or simply the active power active power is it clear so what happened here the t developed torque is directly proportional to active power and developed a torque is directly proportional to active power means when the power increases in the case of i mean uh, this and uh, energy meter what happened the speed of the 
the speed of the uh, disk will increase correct if td increases means the speed of the energy meter here here the speed of the energy meter will increase so when speed increases means active power also increases which is mean that the active power the active power equal to or proportional to speed of disk the active power proportional to the speed of disk but this is actually not happen in practical case because we made a con about assumption that this ip is here but in practical case ip is only here so there will be an error there will be an error so if you take that energy meter speed now which is directly proportional to power means it is actually not proportional to power suppose this is the case this ip is here now there, there is no problem the power will be directly proportional to the speed we can calculate we can uh, pay pay uh, to the consumer and we can collect the cash and we can happily sit but but if this is the ip what happened they if even though if you collect money from the buyer or the what consumer what happened actually that money now it is not according to the correct power consumption because the ip is here ip is here so more money is spent by the consumer to the supplier because he actually consumed less but if you took directly proportional to the speed of the rotation as the energy consumption if this is the case means they are in loss who the consumer are in loss not the supplier suppose i am the supplier and you are the consumer i am very happy because if you sub, if you consume some energy that your energy meter will indicate more than that energy i am happy you are unhappy because you lost your paisa is it clear my dear so what happened how can we avoid this or how can we improve this problem so for that what happened the problem arised here the problem arise here arise here due to what v and ip not exactly 90 degree suppose v and ip is 90 degree means the problem will not be where so what will we will do means in shunt magnet now this is the case of the shunt cross section of the shunt this is the cross section of the shunt, shunt magnet this is shunt magnet now here some coils now here some coils now we provide a copper shading band here my dears this is called the copper shading band what will do that copper shading band see in copper shade suppose we know that here also a magnet right here also series magnet here also shunt magnet suppose the power is on and load is connected there will be some magnet field and due to that magnet field my dears there will be an induced ream of in the copper shading band so copper is a superconductor it's a very good conductor so the resistance offered by the uh, that copper shading band will be very less so due to faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction there will be a current flowing super smoothly current flowing will happen so due to that current current flowing radius the flux around it will increase the flux around it will increase what happened then if phi increases the inductance of this winding now because it is l is equal to what n phi by i if phi increases the inductance also increases if the inductance increases the inductive reactance increases if the inductive reactance of the pressure coil increases there will be the pressure coil current which is more and more lagging compared to the previous case because the what uh, inductance increased by using that copper shading band so for avoiding the problem in the uh, what energy meter we are using copper shading band so that we will get v and ip nearly 90 degree so that this active power consumption is directly proportional to speed of the disk will valid will be correct there will not be any loss the supplier is happy the consumer is happy so no problem will be there no problem will be there my dears is it clear is it clear so we conclude that the speed of the rotation is directly proportional to the active power consumed that's all okay is it clear is it clear that is a simple working of the energy meter 
and the problem is that see there is a derivation session and all see i am taking in the sense of competitional examination point of view not for the university examination remember that okay okay you may ask like so sir why that how that uh, ip into ic sin alpha you arrived no you can refer your books definitely if i took that td proposal to ip and ic sin alpha how it arrived it took more than half hour i am killing my own time so what is the purpose is there in his use no we are preparing accordingly for our examination competitive examination not for university examination so if you are really eager to know how it arrived you can refer your books or simply you can google it you will find the answer how that torque equation will arrive is it clear so i am taking in a manner that you have to you have a knowledge you have to solve problems if some theory is asked you can answer that's all that's my aim that's only that only my aim is it clear so <clears throat> that's all for uh, energy meter next topic is creeping 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 my dears so what is creeping so this is what here it is what a series magnet am i correct here it is a series magnet and in which a series winding is there i know that series winding will be there my dears so this is the load so this is the load okay this winding is connected here okay series <laughs> so really sorry na you have good figure right so you can use that figure also so creeping means sometimes the load is not connected imagine the load is not connected if the load is not connected means ic will not be there or il be il also will not be there correct because ic and il are equal so for developing torque td there are there will be two currents ip and ic should be there but if ic is not there what happens the developed torque will be zero so ideally ideally my dears ideally the uh, aluminum disc na in between this and aluminum disc na it won't rotate ideally but in practical cases in practical cases even though we are not connecting any of the load to the energy meter the disc in between the uh, what uh, magnets will rotate very slowly very very slowly it will rotate that rotation is called the creeping that rotation is called the creeping so creeping means even if you connect or under no load condition so under no load condition what the shunt coil only energizer correct the shunt coil only is the energizer correct so creeping means only shunt coil energizer and no current in the pressure coil the disc will slowly rotate this is called the creeping and how this creeping arises it's maybe due to many many of the reason this creeping may arise due to many of the reasons one is over compensation of friction this may arise due to over compensation of friction my dear what is mean by over compensation of friction normally in the energy meter we make the uh, spindle there will be a spindle and a, what spindle arrangement right there will be a spindle arrangement to the what rotating this so for uh, reducing the friction for the for compensating for frictional error what we normally do we make the bearing as smooth as possible so even a small wind like will rotate it so over compensation friction is one of the reason for the creeping and second one over voltage may affect over voltage may also affect a small rotation like like feeling so that also will be the reason for the creeping and stray magnetic field stray magnetic field means in the sense my dears suppose some external magnetic fields are there suppose you uh, take a magnet and you put here 
what happened the aluminum will be slowly attracted there will be a small attraction uh, to the magnet will occur so that that disc will rotate that risk disc will rotate so these are some reasons for the what <coughs> for the uh, or small vibrations you can say small vibrations on vibrations some small vibrations suppose the energy ministry is not what fixed on very strong sub support or strong surface what happened suppose uh, some big uh, what uh, wind is coming so it will feel like a small vibration and that vibration affect the reading also so so many reasons are there for the creeping for the creeping is it clear my dears so that's all about the concept of energy matter so you may expect a question like what are the nature of shunda and series magnet and the problems we will do that type of problem you will expect regarding the energy meter constant and all okay so that's all if you have any doubt my dears you can ask in your comment session and one of my students asked a doubt that is a perfect way for asking a doubt okay and she asked like mentioning the time correct 40.29 sir what is happening or what is the what is actually there in 40.29 so like that if you mention the doubt with the time then it's very easy for me to directly scroll my video and see what it is actually and i, I can clarify i can clarify so that is a super way for asking a doubt okay is it clear my dears is it clear and uh, next you have to see phantom loading phantom loading only one word type of question will be asked here my will no 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 need to uh, focus much on that No, small voltage. Listen, my dears. only one word type of question will be expected from this session so this is not that much but you have to uh, learn the word phantom loading okay so in laboratory in see suppose you made a, an energy meter you made an energy meter before put into practice practice directly put into the load section you have to test it right you have to test it suppose your energy meter is very big suppose you have thousands of energy meter like thousands of energy meter in your hand for testing each of the energy meter with a particular load then the testing purpose itself consume a very lot of energy there because the energy meter may very heavy heavy load energy meters are also there no so for testing that heavy load of energy the heavy load energy meter you have to uh, bring a heavy load in practical case and you have to test so every time getting a very heavy load or a variable load a very range high range of loads for testing such energy meter is practically impossible so we have to test now we have to test unless test we we don't what put directly into the circuit it will it will have some problem so what we have to do normally we have to test anyway anyhow we have to test the energy meter so without actually loading the energy meter we can test the energy meter and that method is called a phantom loading that's all so in practical cases the variety of loads for testing an energy meter is not available all the time 
So for reducing that problem, for, for removing that problem, and we have to test the analysis meter also by a special type of testing is called the phantom loading. So phantom in the sense it is not real. Fa the meaning of phantom is that it is not real. It is just imaginary or it is fictitious. It is not real. So here also the load is not there. So you see is there any load? No. So what we have to do? We have to apply a rated voltage my dears we rated on the pressure coil and a small v small voltage on the current coil current coil a small voltage on the current coil so that the rated current will be flowing we can adjust the uh, water transformer and all you can adjust to, to that value so that there will be a rated current flowing so it is very easy to flow a rated current right so rated current may be in the name of 5 ampere or something like that you can directly apply the rated current and there will be a rated volts say 230 volt and all and now you can measure sub is there any current means it is like a load load condition correct what was the function of this current coil radius? It can carry certain amount of current so that the energy meter will be energized, right? So if you pass a certain current through it, it's a rated current through it, it's also energized, correct? It is similar to that the current coil is connected in series with the load condition. It is similar to that the current coil is connected in series with the load. That condition is there coming here. So what happened? We can test the I mean you can directly measure the power and you can uh, what vary the current and all you can measure directly the uh, efficiency of the what or the uh, meter is working or not you can test in that way okay that is the only concept you have to learn from this phantom load even no need to remember this diagram also okay just learn this for energy meter testing without actually connecting the load we use phantom loading method that's all we use phantom loading method. Is it clear my dears? Is it clear? Is there any doubt? Is there any doubt? Okay. Can we do a problem? Listen. Write a question. A 230 volt Passing through it for six hours at UPF condition. What is a meter constant and B A what is the meter constant and B calculate the power factor of load if number of revolutions made by meter
प्लीज रीड द क्वेश्चन ए टू थर्टी वोल्ट सिंगल फेस एनर्जी मीटर करंट ऑफ फोर एम बियर पासिंग थ्रू इट ओके फॉर सिक्स अवर्स अट यूनिटी परफेक्ट कंडीशन इफ द डिस्क मेक्स टू टू जीरो एट रेवल्यूशन ड्यूरिंग दिस देन ए वाट इज दि मीटर कॉन्स्टेंट एंड बी कैलकुलेट दि पवर फैक्टर ऑफ लोड इफ नंबर ऑफ रेवल्यूशन मेड बै मीटर इज वन फोर सेवन टू वे आर् ऑपरेटिंग वोलटेज इज टू थर्टी वोल्ट एंड फाइव एम बियर फॉर फोर अवर फर्स्ट सी दि फर्स्ट वाट आर दि गिवन डेटा लेट्स रईट दैट so operating voltage is given right 230 volt correct and a single phase are the current so i will be equal to what 4 ampere pass through it for 6 hour so time is given by 6 hour at a unity power factor so my ds cos phi will be equal to 1 if the disk make n what is that 2208 correct 220 revolutions revolutions during this so what we have to find we have to find the meter constant so what is k we have to find is it clear so what is k we have to find so how can we find that we have we have the n will be equal to k into kilowatt hour correct n will be equal to k k into kilowatt hour where k is the energy meter constant we have to find that is nothing but k into kilowatt hour which is equal to my ds k into kilowatt hour my ds kilowatt hour kilowatt hour means suppose you are taking vi cos phi it is simply watt and if you divide it with a thousand it will become kilowatt and if you multiply the time time is nothing but six so this whole quantity will now in kilowatt hour so <clears throat> what is k here k will be n into thousand divided by Vi cos phi into six, so it will become two two zero eight into thousand divided by V is two thirty my dear, and uh, I is what? And I is two thirty and I is what? Current is four ampere, right? Four cos phi is one and six. You can substitute. You can find. You will get. K as 400. So you will get the value of K as 400. So this is the A part. This is the A part. Is it clear? So many students make error in dividing, forget to dividing it with thousand. They are the main error, of course. It should be always in kilowatt hour because n proportional to what my dear kilowatt hour n proportional to what kilowatt hour so there you can make a mistake so please remember that while solving problems so what is the b session what is the b session now can i have this can i have this So what is the B session? What is B now? Calculate the power factor of the load. So we have to calculate my dears what is cos phi. If number of revolutions made by meter is 14, so n is given as 1472 no issues. Where operating volt is 230 volt. Current is equal to 5 ampere. And the time is equal to what? For hour. Tower for hour. So again we have the same equation n is equal to k into kilowatt hour which is nothing but k into kilowatt hour means 230 into 5 cos phi you have to find correct cos phi into hour 4 all divided by 1000 don't forget to divide it with 1000 then only it will become kilowatt hour so Whatever is it is v into i into time means it's whatever cos phi means it is simply whatever divided by thousand will give the kilowatt hour concept. So what we have to find? Mm, we have to find cos phi. From this cos phi will be n into thousand into divided by not into divided by k into two thirty into. So k is similar to the old say k is similar k into 230 into 5 into 
4 so k is nothing but my dears so n n is what n is given 1472 into 1000 all divided by k is all dk there is no change in constant and all energy meter constant uh, it won't change correct so 5 into 4 so if you multiply and divide it with you will get cos phi is equal to 0.8 you will get cos phi is equal to 0.8 that's all you will get cos phi is equal to 0.8 is it clear my dears is there any doubt is there any doubt is there any doubt you can ask hmm? Blondel theorem, very very important theorem. Blondel's theorem. Blondel's theorem. See my dears. For n wire, n phase system. The watt meters required for power measurement equal to N minus 1 and for N wire N plus 1 phase system the watt meter required for power measurement power measurement will be equal to in be equal to n. This is called the Blondel theorem. A one word question you may expect from this, I mean from this theorem. I will say, okay. suppose for a three phase example, suppose for three phase three wire system, the watt meter required will be what? Suppose for n phase n wire system, you already learned this. You already learned this by using two watt meter method we can calculate the active power you can calculate the reactive powers no problem you can calculate the complete thing phase angle and all no two watt meter method i already taught you i already taught you that right so two watt meter method is an example for measuring is you can measure it with three phase power you can measure no problem will be there you can measure active and reactive power no no problem okay you can measure the phase angle phi is equal to tan inverse rho to 3 into w1 minus w2 divided by w1 plus w2 you learned that you learned that correct so three phase three wire system we just need two meters according to Blondel's theorem suppose suppose three phase four wire system that means suppose there is a neutral also in star connection air neutral also what happened what happened then two watt meter is not sufficient n suppose for n wire three sorry my dear n plus one wire n phase system my dear n phase system okay n plus one wire n phase system what happened we need n watt meter so three phase four wire system we need what? 3 watt meter. 
for 3 phase 3 watt meter so suppose 3 n phase n plus 1 wire we need n watt meter n phase n wire system we just need n minus 1 watt meter we just need n minus 1 watt meter that's all that's all for blundell theorem okay and this key theorem can be applied applicable for applicable for both balanced and unbalanced load that means everywhere you can apply bundle bundle theorem everywhere you can apply bundle theorem is it clear is it clear my dears Just a second, I will refill my pen. <laughs> okay okay so next bridges next you have to see bridges so there are mainly two type of bridges my dears ac dc bridges and AC bridges. So there are only two DC bridges. Western bridge and Kelvin's double bridge. And Western bridge is used for medium resistance measurement. And Kelvin double bridge is used for low resistance measurement. And medium resistance means less than 1 ohm. Sorry, 1 to 100 kilo ohm. And low resistance means less than 1 ohm. <coughs> less than, sorry, less than 1 ohm. Okay, so let's see this first, then we will learn next other bridges. So, Basically, there are two types of bridges according to the supply that we are given. One is DC bridge and another one is AC bridge. In DC bridges, we are giving DC supply for the what uh, working. But the case of AC bridge, we are giving AC supply. There are two types of important AC br DC bridges. Wheelstone bridge, which is used for measuring medium. And uh, the medium resistance means 1 to 100 kilo ohm. 1 ohm to 1 ohm to 100 kilo ohm is referred to as the medium resistance and Kelvin's double bridge is measured for low Kel L low in way in that way you can remember right Kelvin's double bridge Kel low low voltage uh, low uh, resistance that is nothing but 1 ohm less than 1 ohm so what is Western bridge first let's learn that okay wheat stone wheat stone correct that is the word wheat stone wheat stone bridge
so applying adhesive voltage this is the structure of a waste on bridge my dears here this r4 is called the unknown resistance and r1 r2 r3 all are known values of resistances all are known values of resistance so why we have to use this bridges means in order to find the unknown resistance of anything it may be rheostat it may be the symbol resistor in our in your hand or anything okay you can measure the uh, value of a resistance if it is in medium resistance region okay 1 to 100 kilo ohm you can use this bridge you already learned this the working of the Beecham bridge is called is under the balanced condition under balanced condition what there will not be any current which is flowing through the galvanometer that means the galvanometer act simply as an open circuit that means there will not be any current flow means suppose I marked the terms like this there is no current flow means there is no potential difference that is the mean so VB will be equal to VC under balanced condition the current through galvanometer equal to zero that is vb equal to vd sorry vb equal to vc this potential and this potential same then only there will not be any current so this potential can be calculated by suppose this is current i1 and this is current i3 this current is i2 and this current is i4 okay there is a derivation for this we don't want that derivation of course i will say how it is the derivation starts or derivation works i will say we have to calculate the vb first then we have to calculate vc vb is nothing but my dear by using kvl vdc divided by r1 plus r3 will give you the value of this i1 right first you have to calculate i1 i1 equal to i3 by using because there is no current here so i1 equal to i3 which is equal to vdc divided by r1 plus r3 you will get the value of i1 so vdc minus i1 r1 will give you the value of vb stop again i2 equal to i4 you have to find i2 i2 is nothing but v2 divided by r2 plus r4 so vc is nothing but vdc minus i2 into r2 you will get vc stop vb minus vc you will get the value some relation and that relation from that relation you can find the unknown value of resistance and but for any bridges which contain four resistance my dear four resistance can suppose it, uh, any bridge contain whether it may be dc bridge or whether it may be ac bridge, there is an excellent trick for finding the unknown resistance that i will tell you the trick is nothing but the opposite arm impedance or resistances will be the product of this opposite branch impedance or admit i mean resistance will be same that means r1 r4 will be equal to r2 r3 everywhere relating to the bridges you can apply this equation r1 into r4 will be equal to r3 into r2 bus simple so we have to calculate r4 now r4 will be r2 into r3 divided by r1 this is a simple trick you can apply for finding the unknown resistance so you found the unknown resistance you want to calculate this r4 now you have you know the value of r2 r3 r1 and all simple so this into this will be give you this into this that's that simple trick you give will give it to solve any bridges my dear any bridges you no need to calculate the derivation because derivation no one will ask who asked derivation there is a problem of these are the these are the a bridge uh, resistance value find the unknown resistance that may be the problem right not derive the hey, what unknown resistance equation for these numbers no one will ask you so forget the derivation smart way and tricky way you have to learn okay so this is the easiest way for finding the unknown resistance in a western bridge is it clear my dears is it clear so okay 
so that's all for today's session let's meet again tomorrow with a new session so until then bye take care